Welcome to Ahead of Their Game podcast. In this episode, we are crossing the pond and speaking to Karen Mucky Martinez. You'll find out why, after 17 years of owning a business in Sevilla, Spain, she decided to move back to her native Michigan. If you want to find out more about sports in the US, you've come to the right place. I'm Graham Ginelli, and let's get to it. Karen and I, we've connected on Zoom, and obviously there's the time differences between the US and Spain. Um, can you just tell us a little bit, of, for people who might not know about you, what you do and what you're up to at the moment? Yes. Um, well, I grew up in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, that's where I went to high school. I went to college when I was in college. Um, I studied Spanish and my plan was to become a physical therapist. I was all ready to do a master's program. I had some extra time before I graduated. So I decided to do a semester in Spain. Um, so I went to Spain for the fall semester and I loved it. I ended up staying the entire year. I remember calling mom and dad on Thanksgiving of all days and saying, I want to stay. I have to stay. I have to stay for the spring in Seville. And mom said, if you can pay for it, then you can stay. So I got on the phone. I got a loan and I stayed. Um, I ended up back in Spain in 2003. And that's where I met you when we were both working as owners of language academies. So I spent 17 years doing that. And then in 2020, in the height of the pandemic, I took a job back in Michigan um, at a public school. It were located in New Buffalo, Michigan. So we're about 60 miles outside of Chicago right. as you follow the lake north. Going back to when you first, you know, you first, you get to Seville, um, everything's, you know, completely new and, and different. What challenges do you face becoming a teacher and then going on to become a language school owner? It never really set out to become a teacher. Like I said, I was going to study physical therapy and then I went to Spain and fell in love with Spain. And I just, there was just this desire. I had to go back. And when I arrived there, there was nothing else. You couldn't, as an American, you really couldn't do anything except teach. Um, and then the position just sort of evolved. Jose actually owned the school um, when I started working there and we fell in love, I guess. And then I was kind of thrown into an administrator as well, an owner. That was hard. That was hard. I enjoy being, a. I always say we were, we were good administrators. We ran a great academy, but the business end of it was really hard. That was the challenge, challenging part for me being a business owner. Um, before the pandemic, by the time at the height of the academy, we were at about 1500 students and between 35 and 40 staff. Um, it, it grew really fast and I'm one, I like to be involved in everything and that was impossible. So kind of learning how to, you know, let go of control, learning how to delegate. Um, I always found it, it was an enormous pressure for me. Um, it was so important that if I had family spending money to come to my school, for me, it was so important that we were offering quality classes, you know, yeah. the kids they needed to come, they needed to have fun, but they needed to learn. And so it was just a lot of pressure. I think a lot of pressure letting go of control, maybe. Um, and so I miss it. I do miss it. And I do miss being in the leadership role, actually. I did enjoy being a leader. Would you still consider yourself to be a leader now? Because, I mean, you're in a completely, it's a kind of a different environment, but you are still leading a class. Yes. And I do feel like I try to bring my leadership in other ways to the school itself. Um, this year I've taken on a role. I'm going to mentor a new music teacher in the building. Um, and I try to just be, I always tell my, my boss, I try to just be the employee that I wanted. I want, I want to come in with a smile every day, positive. And I think that in some ways is leadership as well. Just trying to, you know, spread that positivity around the building. Do you say to people that that did want to make the move back to the USA or even the other way around. They wanted to move and go out to Spain, maybe a young student who wants to go and try. Oh, I would say do it, do it. Um, that is my goal. Like for me, my mission is never, my vision is never just the classroom itself. It's where is what I'm going to, what, where's what I am doing? Where is that going to take my students? But I thought I'm going to do a unit on Mexico because we've got several families here in New Buffalo that we call um, heritage learners. So either they're first generation Americans and at home they speak in Spanish or just kind of like our family. They come from a background where Spanish is spoken and it really sparked an interest, especially in some of the little boys that maybe I hadn't been able to get to with my normal classes and just 
um, two weeks ago, all of the blue on Facebook, I see a little boy from my class who's going into third grade, a friend of my son's, and they were in Mexico City, him and his mom in Mexico City at Frida Kahlo's La Casa Azul. And she wrote in the Facebook post that ever since that unit on Mexico, he had been hounding her. We need to go to Mexico, mom. We need to go to Mexico. And she said all the way in the car ride to Frida Kahlo's house. He told her all about her life story and all about her. And then two days later, they're in Chichen Itza at the Mayan ruins that we had talked about. And I just thought, oh, this, I'm getting goosebumps talking about it. <laughs> this is why I do what I do. Yeah. I just want students to see there is a whole world out there. So it sounds so rewarding. And we, we have to talk about sport because. Oh, I was... yes. The popularity of soccer is incredible right now. Um, but I do always say, because my brother has always said that, Karen, you are somebody who sets a goal and you work until you get to that goal. And I really, if I, when, when, when I was thinking about the questions you sent, there is something to do with sports that really defines me. And I tell this story a lot, um, not so much soccer, but I really wanted to be a cheerleader in seventh grade. The first year we could cheer, I tried out and I didn't make the team and I was devastated, but I thought, okay, you got two options, Karen, you either work hard and you try again next year or you give up. And so I just remember like working so hard in my basement, doing jumps and jumps and jumps. And I tried out in eighth grade. I made the team. I was so excited. I got what I wanted. Ninth grade, I was playing basketball at the time. And the night before trots, I pulled a hamstring. I swear I tore that hamstring. I don't think I ever went to the doctor, but I was hurting so bad for so long. And I tried out for cheerleading and I didn't make the team. And I remember sitting in that auditorium when the names were called and just going, oh my gosh, I didn't make it. I didn't make it. And again, I had two choices. You work hard and you try again or you give up. And I worked and I worked and I worked and I made the team sophomore, junior, senior year. And I went on to cheer three years at university as well and became the captain. Wow. So I always say that that especially, and it has, I mean, cheerleading is a sport at the end of the day, when I cheered um, in at college, it was a co-ed team and it was, we did a lot of training. Um, there's a great show on Net Netflix called cheer. I mean, it is a sport. It is not easy. Um, but I always say that really defined who I am and kind of my work ethic. And, and soccer as well. I mean, your, your son, is it your son, Liam, that loves, he's like a mini Messi that 2018 World Cup that Liam really became interested in soccer. And so then the next year we signed him up in Spain to play soccer. And we saw a talent then. He was just little. Um, and I, yeah, when we first got here, we were a little bit like, what's the soccer going to look like in in mm -hmm. the United States? But my goodness, it is taking off. It is, is that really. Because of, do you think that's because of the you know, the Inter Miami, the Beckhams, the, you know, that type of thing is, is, is a co contributed to the success of the sport recently, or is it a, something else that's taken off? Do you I, think? I think it's been gradual. I mean, um, girls soccer was really popular, you know, maybe not when I was in school, but after I left school, it really became popular for girls to play soccer. And of course the U S women's team has always been dominant, maybe not this year in the world cup, but they've always been really good. The U S women's soccer team. I don't know what it is exactly about men's soccer, why it took so long for it to really take off, but it is taking off now. It is a little, for example, here in New Buffalo, um, in the fall, the kids play soccer or they play American football. Unfortunately, they're having a hard time getting enough kids to play American football right now, oh, really? which is, which is a shame. Cause I love American football as a cheerleader. I love American football, but the parents are kind of choosing now the soccer side of it. I don't know if it's because of, you know, all the injuries you see in American football, um, I, mm. I know we watched recently the show uh, quarterback on Netflix and what those quarterbacks go through physically yeah. is, you know, you want to think twice before you want your son to be a, an, an NFL quarterback. So, but the soccer is just there. I mean, we're in this tiny little community and we've got three U10 teams, a couple U8 teams. Um, so it's really, really taking off. I do think Messi is helping things though. <laughs> I know we never watched any MLS ever, but now it is on all the time. So our TV is constantly soccer. Liam's 
favorite league is La Liga. He prefers Spanish soccer. That's his goal is he really, that is his goal. I mean, he has a goal. Um, he'd like to play for Sevilla football club. That's been our team. That's Jose's team. Um, but really it's on all day. And Sevilla were there when they preseason training. Cause I remember seeing a photo. Yes. A we photo happened, the player. Yes. We happened wow. to um, uh, Liam is on, um, on a soccer team. He plays different soccer teams, which we could talk about later. Cause there is some different things going on with sports here in the States as well. But his coach reached out one day and said, Hey, I just saw that Sevilla football club is going to play crystal palace in, in Detroit at Comerica park where the baseball team, the Detroit tigers play. And so he said, you guys want to go with us to the game? We said, yeah, sure, no problem. And again, it's just like the world's coming together. Um, Jose, maybe two weeks before the game, was talking with a friend who'd been our gestor for the academy, a friend of ours. He'd come to our wedding when we got married here in the United States. And he said to him, oh, Antonio, because they met, Jose used to own a bar where he'd put football on or football on all the time. And he said, oh, Antonio, we're going to go see Sevilla Football Club. And he said, my brother just became the communications director of the team. He said, I'm going to talk to him and see what he can do so that Liam can meet the oh, players. Wow. So, I mean, it all, it just came together. And we found out, at, I think nine o'clock on, on a Thursday night, we found out that the team was going to be in Brighton, Michigan, just outside of Detroit for a practice from nine to noon. And Liam was at my parents' house two and a half hours away. It would be another two and a half hours to get over to Brighton. But Jose and I were, we said, this is important. This is something, if yeah. Liam is really serious about this, we want him to see what it looks like for a team to practice during their open practice. So we went up, we got him. Little did we know they'd all sign. He had a soccer ball. He had a flag. He got pictures taken. Um, a couple players had a little scrimmage um, with some kids. He was able to play with a couple of the players. I mean, it was just an amazing experience that I really do think will probably be a turning point for Liam. Oh, really? It yeah. Was important. Wow. Uh, it, I just think uh, it was funny because he said, um, he, he's a funny kid. He'd gone to two soccer camps this summer. He ended up doing three soccer camps. Um, at the second camp was at my alma mater. It was at the university where I had cheered for, and I was so excited for him to go to the camp. And it wasn't, he wasn't that excited about the camp. And he said, I didn't really learn too much. And when we were at that soccer practice, it was just the day after the camp. He said, mom, I learned more at this soccer practice than I did in that whole soccer camp. And I said, well, what did you learn? And he just started to rattle off things that he'd seen the players doing. Um, and I think it was inspiring for him because some of the drills that he does with his team, the Sevilla football club team was doing. So it was just a way to really see this is what professional soccer is going to look like. Yeah. If this is really something that you want to pursue. So I really like your, your, for, I think it's on Facebook. You've got every accomplishment begins with a decision to try. Yeah. And that really does, I think that describes you really, really well. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah. that, you know, to have that sort of rub off on your children and the kids that you're teaching, I think they're really lucky to have you as a teacher. Um, yeah. and it's really nice to see actually for people that are just listening and not watching the video in the background, we've got this amazing display. Um, <laughs> I can't read the letters at the top. But it looks ah, really Siviano. Yes, Siviano. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. We've got lots of Spanish. It's really Black nice. Um, yes, lots of Spanish influence. I've got the the bulls. <laughs> oh, wow, we've got a bull, a Spanish flag. We've got phrases on the wall. Yeah. Classroom's really nice, actually. Really, really Thank modern. You. Wow. But it, it it is a little. It is hard sometimes because the only place I've traveled where they speak Spanish is Spain. I've never been to Mexico. I've never been to Central South America. Um, so Spain is what I have. But through my students, I like to teach those other cultures. I have a student whose mom is from Argentina and they just went down there um, this summer. So of course we will be doing for Hispanic Heritage Month, Argentina, which works in great with Messi because yeah. all the kids are on Messi. <laughs> I just really think, I don't find teaching difficult to be honest. My mom always says, you make it look so easy because she was a third grade teacher and She'd say, you make it look so easy. I think mm -hmm. what, what it is, is I just really love what I do and I'm confident in, in it. I've done it for so many years and I've seen the results that I'm confident in what I do. Um, and I, I know, I think it was for my interview, um, when I came to new Buffalo, I think somebody said, if somebody could describe you as a teacher, what would it be? And I think anyone who comes in 
in sees me teach would describe my energy. Mm. Um, I don't sit down at all during the day. I'm up all the time, but I'm not like that if the kids aren't in the building. So it's the kids that give me energy. I think I really, really enjoy working with kids. What resources would you recommend for someone who wanted to get into leadership and maybe not just teaching, but being a, a successful leader? Any books that you've, you've read that made a big impact? Um, I, I used to read a, a lot more books on leadership um, when I lived in Spain, but How to Win Friends and Influence People. I always found that book to be not only just as a leader, but just as a person. I mean, it's really just about how to treat people and, you know, how to get people, you know, how to listen to them and, and how to get them to listen to you. I just always really liked that book. Um, I love, I've always loved feel the fear and do it anyway, was another one that, that inspired me about, you know, taking risks and that sometimes things might not go as you want them to go. And then, yeah, those are the two that I think as a leader. And then there was another one, the power of now, which was not so much for leadership, but just for self, just, you know, really living in the moment and, you know, trying not to worry. I was a worrier when I was at the academy. I worried a lot about things and trying to just, you know, take it as it is and live in today and enjoy today. So I guess those three are my top picks. And when you're not in the school, what are you doing to sort of your downtime, your relaxing time? What soccer. type of things? Soccer. <laughs> um, because in the States, it's kind of changed since I was here. Um, when I was in school, you had your school sports, like you played for the school and the school offered everything. Like when I was in seventh grade, I played volleyball, basketball, I ran track, there was softball. And then you, normally seventh, eighth grade is when you can kind of try out all those sports. And then when you get to high school, then you kind of pick the ones you want. So I was always a three sport athlete. I did yeah. cheerleading in the fall and in the winter. And then I played softball. Um, now you still have your sports your sports, but they're also rec leagues. So Liam plays in a rec league, which is kind of recreation league, which is people in the community that get together. And, you know, Jose and I were talking a little bit about sports in the States in the last day or two. And he's, he's always in, um, kind of impressed and inspired by how much the community gets involved in sports as well. Mm -hmm. You know, like, especially with T-ball and softball and baseball. I mean, the whole community comes out. That's really when I felt like I got to know people coming in the pandemic yeah. inside. I couldn't talk to anybody, but once baseball, T-ball, softball started, everybody's there. Um, and then what's new since I've um, been back is that there's a lot of what they call travel teams. And so that's where the, you know, kids that have the talent and have the drive and have the ambition, they normally um, join one of the travel teams, which is much more commitment um, from them and from the parents. So we make that drive to Kalamazoo an hour and 15 minutes, twice a week for practice. And then on the weekends, once or twice for games. But and then traveling also includes lots of tournaments. So just last weekend, Liam was in a tournament um, where he played Saturday two games and then Sunday two games. The weekend before, he was in another tournament where he played Friday night, Saturday, and then two games on Sunday. Yeah. So it I mean, like, Saturday, it sounds like what we do here is it sounds similar football to what is I life. Do. Like that's what we always say: football is life. But Liam never complains, and in fact. In my Mother's Day card this year, he wrote, thank you for taking me to soccer practice, mom. So, you know, the minute Liam says, I can't do this anymore, I don't want to do this, we won't do it. But for right now, he does want to do it. And again, my daughter, too, we haven't talked much about Dahlia, but I just feel like, especially here in the States, there's so much more for girls to do. I just felt in Spain, I have two older stepdaughters, there weren't many opportunities for sports for girls. Um, so my daughter, she did gymnastics last year. Well, she's done gymnastics before she came to the state, she did it. Um, and the gym was just amazing. The facilities were amazing. The coaches were great that she's decided to leave the gymnastics for a little bit. She's going to try out volleyball. She's a great little softball player. My goodness. You'd never know she was born in Spain when you see her playing softball. She's going to give track a try this year. So yeah, sports, is, sports, I really deep down think might be one of the reasons that we did want to come back here because really? there is nothing when I was in high school, my freshman year. So my first year of high school, our, um, my school's football team made it American football team made it to the state championships. And that was amazing. That was an experience. One of the best weekends of my life was the entire town. I swear it was the entire town. We drove about eight hours up North 
there were more Coopersville fans in the stands than the team that we were playing that lived in the area. Um, so yeah, it, there's nothing like it. So yeah. no, it sounds incredible. Well, thank you so much. Oh, thank Aaron you, Mulkey, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. And in the next one, we're going to be talking to a former pro basketball player. So don't miss it. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Ahead of Their Game.